start. <laughs> I'm here on behalf of Senator Eric Nesbitt. Uh, just here to introduce myself as the go-to person if you have any immediate questions about your state government or any concerns. Um, our office is open and fully staffed and we're looking forward to uh, serving you over the course of the term. So if you have any questions, feel free to let me know. I've got business cards and there's a handout uh, up front there as well uh, with contact information. So feel free to reach out. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Lord, if you're wrong, you're not talking, you're talking about Lansing? <laughs> no, that's what I'm wondering, uh, last name. P-R-Z-Y-G-O-C-K-I. Okay. A lot of fun to learn. Forgive us if we ever forget to pronounce it right. That's hard. Uh, the office is in Lansing. Okay, that's so, yeah, I'll be going around the district uh, just to meeting. Okay. And I see we have Craig here. Would you like to? Sure, absolutely. So, uh, came to my attention that there were some questions and concerns about um, a couple of our responses. I certainly wanted you to have all the information um, uh, you know, handed to you. There was a, a call that we were. Uh, there was a question that I was told that we didn't respond to. Uh, the bus crash. Um, the call came in as a low priority uh, call from uh, the, the 911 center. So we actually dispatched the initial, ambul uh, initial ambulance, which was the closest ambulance, and that vehicle was turned around for a priority one call. The second ambulance was then dispatched, same thing, all the way to that accident, uh, it was turned around for a priority one call. We then turned that call off to another provider, and then they were called off. So they were, we, we, no ambulance ever uh, arrived on the scene because they were called off before they got there. The other one was a lift assist against a low priority call. Um, the ambulance that was sent, that was dispatched, was turned around for a priority one call. The second ambulance that was sent was then turned around before it even got on the scene. So, uh, those were the two calls that came up. Um, um, at least that's what I was, I was uh, told that there were questions that we didn't even respond to those calls. So, uh, in addition, I just wanted to, to bring, uh, to bring forward to your attention that, um, over the last, uh, four years, uh, our compliance with our on-time compliance was at, I apologize, I'm going to pull the right sheet here. The, at 91.73% on the rural average. Um, so on-time compliance of 91.73% for rural average, So, which is certainly uh, pretty good. Do you have any questions as far as our responses or any concerns regarding our agreement? That was another thing. Is, uh, I was told that we weren't honoring our agreement. When I asked for a copy of the agreement that was was made, there wasn't a, a, a or there was no written agreement between us. So if there is a uh, an expectation that we have an ambulance in the fire station, um, you know, again, my understanding was that we would park that ambulance there when it was in the community, uh, not that it needed to be in the community. And if, whether there's a, a misunderstanding on my part, I apologize, but the individual who signed or who agreed to that isn't with us any longer. So we just need to hash that out if there's a uh, interest that, that that's what the expectation is. So, uh, any questions for me at all? Well, a little bit. Uh, it does sound like maybe there was somewhat of miscommunication, and and I did think it was only fair for you to have a re have the ability to respond to the public. The no show, according to dispatch, in 20 years he's never had a true no show. There are disregards and call offs, and apparently right. that's what this was. Right. However, I am gathering that's from dispatch. Well, it's from dispatch, but after we waited 23 minutes on the lift assist for the ambulance show, we made the call to have the refusal signed ourselves to. It's still a disregard, it's not a no show. Okay. And, and, we'll call it that. and it's still the expectation that. Um, on a lower priority call, again, a priority one or a priority, sorry, priority two or a priority three call, 
for priority one call comes in, that ambulance is rerouted. No matter what company, no matter what ambulance provider you're doing, they're going to do the exact same thing. Right. Like the amounts with Quake up front about yeah. that. And it, it could be just expectations are different. And maybe there hasn't been the communication that would have helped through this whole thing. Going back to the contract, there is a five-year contract, but I think what you're referring to is the fire station that there was no contract. Correct. Am I following? Correct. There's no, and when I asked for agreement, that's when I was told there is no written agreement that says that, that we would house a vehicle in that station. Okay. So you don't feel that you have broken that, a contract no. because it didn't exist. Correct. But then there's the, the, the part about response time that is a part of our contract. But that's an average response time. Correct. And as far as you know, and your records indicate, you have met that? Correct. On average. Okay. I think it's safe to say that there might be other things of maybe sliding dissatisfaction that should still be discussed with you and Absolutely. brought to your attention. Absolutely. We can, we can work with any problem that, 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 that's available. So as long as some line of communication is open. Right. And given that this was, I personally think a five-year contract was too long to begin with. Okay. Without any um, means of termination other than a breach situation, would you be open to discussing uh, termination at, under mutual consent? Yeah, absolutely. Okay. So I, I wouldn't have a problem with, with uh, rehashing out the contract at all. And even if it resulted in a termination? Yeah, absolutely. If we're not performing to the standard, the expectation, then, then yeah, absolutely. It, it would make sense. If there's a better option on the table, absolutely. But if the expectation is that we're parking an ambulance in the, in the fire station, and as long as it happens to grapple, the other vendor has to park an ambulance in the fire station as well. Uh, maintain that vehicle in the community. I mean, if you're, if you're offered an ambulance in your community 24-7, dedicated to your community, um, to be quite honest with you, I can't do that. I would walk away from you. Yeah. I would let you sign the contract with them because it's in your community's best interest. But based upon what, what I've looked at here, I can tell you it, it can't happen because the average collected is $62,000 a year mm -hmm. for fee for service, and we're giving out $107,000 average charity to community members a year. So we're actually we're actually writing off $107,000 every single year average over the last four years, and we're collecting 62,000 average so from our township. From from this township, correct. So you wouldn't maybe fight really hard to keep. Us. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> no, we, we we do want to stay here. I mean, there's a reason. There, there's a reason we're here. We want to be here. It, it, it it's, it's consistent with our geography. Right. And how this works in Michigan, which I'm not a, a big fan of myself, to be quite honest with you, is a cost share between communities. Where I come from, um, the community I live in, um, there's 5,000 ambulance calls um, per year. We have five ambulances staffed in that community 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Where is it? It's in the uh, northwest suburbs of Chicago. Oh, yeah. yeah. But, but, but there's $9 million of funding for that one community. Okay. I mean, and it's, it, it's, I mean, it makes a world of difference. Mm -hmm. So, so it's, I would actually love to have an ambulance in every community that we're in. Um, that would make complete sense, you know, to me because, you know, response times would be amazing. Uh, the care would be absolutely amazing. Everybody would be absolutely happy until their tax bill pays. Yeah. Uh, the cost of an ambulance is about a half million dollars for one 24 hour ALS ambulance. And that's consistent with what like the said. Absolutely. And, and they gave an impressive presentation, I'll tell you. Yeah, I, I sat out in the parking lot, so I didn't, I didn't want to yeah. jump in through their presentation. I wouldn't expect them to be in when I was actually doing a presentation. That's professional person, courtesy, so. and I appreciate yeah. that. Yeah. We, we're, we're, we're all in the same profession. At the end of the day, um, whether you know, we're, we're competing. John and I are competing, but our, our staff members don't. They, they look at us, we're all medics in the field. So, And same thing with John. So I, I don't have a problem with them at all. And in the case of mutual aid backup, yeah. it's best if everybody's Absolutely. getting along and yeah. working well together. Absolutely. And, and we all do. Again, it, it, there, there's there's a little bit of, of headbutting just for um, for territory. Um, sure. that, but that's sure. really about it. At the end of the day, everybody's working together. Right. together so. and in the end, it isn't really just what we do here. As you say, and same with them, you both need to have a few 
communities that are adjacent to each other to really make this work. Right. Absolutely. Absolutely. And we see where their vehicles are. You know, the Pine Grove vehicle we see in Kalamazoo, their Allegan vehicle we see in Kalamazoo, we see their Kalamazoo vehicles in Allegan. So, I mean, it kind of works all the way around. But unfortunately, nobody can stick an ambulance in one community unless it's funded by the community. There's just no way to do it. But the cost share is the best case scenario we have in Michigan. Okay. Go ahead. Go ahead. I have a question back to the call, the disputed call. Sure. I'm just trying to understand how this works. So, if dispatch, I'm thinking, is it dispatch that would have said, well, this call isn't as important as that call, so we're going to pull you guys off of it. Where do our guys get informed in this? Where does that come into play? Because, I mean, is it possible that our guys didn't know that they got pulled off? Who talked to you? It's a priority. Right. Right. Was it all the radio traffic? Because they had a way to get all the radio. They're on a different dispatch frequency. That's what I said, yeah. Okay. But, yes, we do talk to them directly on our radios, yes. Okay. But you guys had to wait 20 minutes and you still didn't. Is that what I just heard? And you still didn't get the information that you needed? Yes. So you made your own decision. That's not tying up exactly with dispatch report. They gave quite a detail, and I can share that with anybody who wants to question it further. But it was directly from the central dispatch as far as which minutes what happened. And I can give you the whole thing. Okay. But in the end, what happened is not uncommon as far as whoever the provider is. Correct. They have to respond to the highest level priority. Correct. Right? Yep. So unless you do have an abundance of... Multiple resources. Yeah. You had three calls going on, if I'm not mistaken, at that same time. On that, on the lift assist disregard. Right. Because I remember hearing a party went to Bangor going out, and I thought I heard another one go out, and we were getting the Keeler car. Right. And so it would have been 25, 30 minutes before we got them. And so at that point, the patient said, you know what, I'm not going to the hospital anyway. And that's when we decided that we were going to get We got this. Right. But if we didn't inform the fire department that there was that issue and you guys were expecting that ambulance, then that is something that we need to work out on our end. I think what's coming up is you're on 715, aren't you? I couldn't tell you. I think you're 715 and we're on 205. I'm 705 and we're on 205. And so we're having a hard, you know, I hear you dispatch sometimes if I'm on scan, but when I go on scene, I'm on priority channel, I don't listen to scan at that point. Right. So, and I do know that your guys switch over when they're talking to us direct and we try to give you guys updates inbound. But we don't necessarily know who's where at what point. We don't even know that. Just... I always call in incoming pride unit. Yeah. This is what you got. That's that thing. We try to switch over your channel to do that, so you're not. We're not on county frequency doing that. Gotcha. Okay. But uh, other questions. So yeah, it may well be that there's other areas of dissatisfaction that needs to be met once, but I guess. Um. <laughs> no, but I, I, I'm an open book. It's it's fine. On the board's part, the fire department's part. Oh, probably. Okay. Okay. Then it's something that we obviously should be discussing and talking about so that if we can correct it. Obviously, we can correct it. If we can't, then again, you should look for another vendor. Absolutely. And your new contracts that you take on, are you still proposing five year contracts yeah. or are you reducing them? We've got five year contracts with um, two auto renewals up to a 15 year max. So we've done that. We've got uh, three year deals as well. So it just all depends. But again, if there's if there's a request for a, a, a lower term of renewal, then not an issue at all. Thank you for your time. And, and I'll, I'll make sure to make sure that everybody has my contact information. We can discuss it and okay. actually just send it to you to get it to the board members. Perfect. Thank you. Thank you. No. This is not going to be seamless because, again, I couldn't get anything to print, so I'm kind of 
having to bounce back and forth between the computer and some paperwork. So, for the month of December, we had a total of 22 calls. Six were structure fires, two were assist to Bangor, two were assist to Lee. We had 14 medicals, one vehicle accident, one smoke scare, which was not a fire. Which brings us to, for the year 2018, we ran 117 calls total. One animal rescue, which was New Year's Day, Day night. Right. Last year, which was the horse. <laughs> 37 medical assists, which the vast majority came in the last two months because we started the rescue back up. One structure fire, which turned out to be just very small fire that didn't amount to a whole lot. It was in uh, outbuildings. Two CO incidents, one citizen complaint, seven grass fires, five motor vehicle accidents, three passenger vehicle fires, one down, or excuse me, 12 down power lines, two trash fires that were on the ground, which is classified as an illegal burn, one irking electrical equipment, which wound up being a transformer that caught fire and burned, two false alarms, <clears throat> one cover up, one cover move up assignment for Lee Township, and one more smoke event that was the non-fire. We ran a total of 13 structure fire assists for Lee. No, sorry. Wow. <coughs> 13 structure fire assists to Bangor with an average response of 13 minutes 46 seconds. Three structure fire assists for Bloomingdale and one grass fire assist with an average response time of 16 minutes. 18 structure fire assist for Lee Township with an average response time of 14 minutes, 36 seconds. Five structure fire assist to South Haven with an average response of nine minutes, 12 seconds. That is the calls for 2018. Our response time within our township was eight minutes and 13 seconds. Last, well, in December of 2017, we suspended our multi-department membership policy, policy number 4,000. I would request of the board, since we suspended it for one year trial period, I would like to suspend it indefinitely. And I plan on rewriting a policy to allow dual departmental memberships. The program we had tried with Bangor worked out wonderfully. Um, we wound up getting two extra people through Bangor, which we may now be in jeopardy of losing because Bangor sounds like they're going to suspend that policy. Um, with the explanation that JC and I went to the meeting last night, I don't speak quite as eloquently as JC does, so I'm just going to say basically the fire chief of Bangor sent out a message over at Texcom, which is a, a program, kind of like Facebook for the fire department. Um, and he got back that the majority of departments don't do it, so they're not going to do it. Um, while the program between us and Bangor was started, at the repeated urging of Derek, some of you may remember this, um, for about two months he continually called me to get this, our policy suspended because we had a firefighter move to Bangor who told him he would not quit Columbia, but he would join Bangor if he could be on both. So they suspended their policy of non-dual memberships. We suspended ours. We allowed the program to go. It was working out great. We both had the benefit of not having to pay to train this one person, and each department had a trained person. We, in turn, got two from Bangor, and this was all discussed between the two departments. We have signed paperwork and everything was agreed to. Our firefighter moved out of the area 
moved back into Columbia Township for financial reasons. And within a month of that, the I got a phone call that <coughs> Bangor was planning on suspending that program and not allowing their two firefighters that came to us to remain on the department. So and it wasn't all that mutual. No, it was not. Um, when it worked out, well, I'm gonna I'll reel that one back in. You need to start coming to these meetings more often. <laughs> Unfortunately, their fire board passed their new SOP regarding that last night, and that program through Bangor is suspended. With that said, my hopes is that we may share firefighters with Lee Township. We may be able to share some with um, Bloomingdale. So I would I would urge you to suspend the policy indefinitely until I can get one written up that has the stipulations that need to be put in it for liability reasons and types of response that we will accept and expect. So when I get that in place, we can enforce that policy. Any questions? I just want to say you uh, were legal firms. Are they what? Fine. Um, a lot. Of, what, basically, what we do is the first time we go out, I kind of chew on people a little bit, tell them, don't do that again. But if you do that again, the red trucks will show up along with the brown cruiser. And there have been people that the first time they burn stuff, I made sure. Because it was so blatantly obvious, as I was coming over the overpass by Walmart, could see the plume of very black smoke. Mm -hmm. um, I made sure that when I responded to dispatch that I was en route, that I had the sheriff's deputy dispatch and requested a fine on that one because it was well, it it was yeah, it was a little on the ridiculous side of the pile of plastic that I saw mm -hmm. that was on fire. Yeah. So, any questions? Yeah, I don't know if it's more for JC or Dave, um, but really both your crews, whether it's medical or fire, do you do drug screening? We we do during physicals every year, and we will do randoms. If there's ever an accident, they're, yeah, they're and, required and to do a drop, drop random. Right. And if there's an accident, we always do them. We had one last year when there was an accident? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it, it's, it's every year. During our yearly physicals. Okay. <laughs> and any new um, new personnel get it done. Thank you. Thank you. Jason. Good evening, everyone. Hello. Hi, Deputy. For the month of December 2018, I traveled 1,366 patrol miles. There were 161 property inspections completed. There were five assists to the Sheriff's Department, zero assists to other agencies, and two liquor inspections were completed. For Columbia Township, there were 109 total dispatch calls. For December 2018, by department, those calls were 36 EMS, 64 police, three wrecker, and three animal control. The police incident types were two trespass, eight general assist, one retail fraud, one armed robbery, seven alarms, two medical assist, six assaults, three v &Es, five suspicious situations, seven health and safety, two harassing TX, five traffic crash, one civil property dispute, three larcenies, one fleeing loot, three obstructing justice, one fraud and two OWIs. For 2018, for Columbia Township, there were a total of 1,229 dispatch calls. Uh, broken down by department, I have 80 fire, 257 EMS, 770 police, 49 record, 70 animal control. Um, I drove a total of 6,250 miles for 2018 and I completed 1,332 property inspections. Is there any comments, questions, concerns? Got a boy. Yeah. Holy cow. <laughs> <laughs> One guy doing all that. God bless you, sir. Thank you. Yeah.
Okay, thank you all so very much. Jay, yes, ma'am. With us wanting to articulate more. Yes. Is that, I mean, that's the pretty long list of things. Is there time to do that? I can, I can always. You can do it. It's yeah. up there. It's, okay. it's not an issue. Okay. Because those are usually. I mean, just, just <laughs> obviously, you know, a number, like the proper inspection, may go down by a little bit because I'll be doing a blind one now. I mean, just the time wise and one now. You got a report for us? Yeah, I'm probably oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Any other questions or comments? Or? Okay, thank you all so much. I think when you're late, you should have to wait till. Uh, hey, give me a From the uh, County Commission's office, uh, speaking of animal control, the uh, director, Casey Murphy, reported on the activities of the uh, department. Uh, it goes back to 2007, the number of dogs euthanized at the shelter was 529, which is uh, was 65% of the 860 dogs taken in. In 2018, the number of dogs brought to the shelter was 760, and the percent euthanized was 18%. So that's a, a great job. Uh, the remainder uh, were claimed by their owners, adopted, or transferred to other facilities. Um, Casey also won a scholarship to attend uh, strategic planning for shelters um, in Austin, Texas, and we granted her request to attend that training. Uh, the board approved the resolution authorizing the health department to issue a $4 million bond for the purpose of developing a health department unit, which I talked to you before about. It's going to be the one in front of the ISD, which is going to be great for the community, uh, uh, mostly uh, dental work and such what's going on in there. Homeland Security Grant. Commissioners approved the continuation of its role as fiduciary agent for Region 5 Homeland Security, uh, $794, $140 in grant funds for fiscal year 2018 for preventing, deterring, responding to, and recovering from threats and incidents of terrorism. Uh, road Commission appointments uh, approved the appointments of W.C. Askew to District 1, Jeffrey Moffat to District 5, and they will um, serve through 2024. We hired a new finance director, Ryan Post, was hired to replace Steve Vicenci, who left the county for another position in Kalamazoo. Ryan actually lives in Elmina and uh, formerly held the same position in St. Joe County. Uh, new commissioners, Randy Pete and uh, Mike Chappelle, were uh, sworn in. And a big thank you to uh, Dick Freestone and Mike Toth for their years of service. We had our organizational meeting, and at that meeting, uh, Richard Godfrey was elected chairman, and I was elected vice chair for 2019. A change was made to the uh, official bylaws and rules of procedures to elect officers each year instead of every other year, every election year. So we'll be doing that on an annual basis. And for those of you that like numbers, court screenings for 2018. <coughs> A total of 127,127 customers came through the courthouse doors. Paw Paw Court had an average of 8,773 each month, and South Haven Court had an average of 1,820 each month. So, there you go. Uh, one other thing I have that was, uh, if you guys want to put up, uh, was given to us in crisis. <coughs> if you need help, if you want to uh, put up out here, uh, it came from the uh, health department, and something that uh, People can call and get help with different things. Another thing I wanted to mention was uh, the Road Commission now has a weekly update, which is sent out. Uh, I'm not an engineer, so if I read these things off, there's questions I can't answer them. But uh, just what this week said, the uh, maintenance operations, miscellaneous street projects, as follows, and as well as permits, County Road 380, Columbia Township from Village of Reedsville East Township Line, 36th Avenue, Waverly Township between 40th Street and 37th and a half. Uh, County Road 374 in Lawrence Township at Twin Culverts. 50th Street, Arlington Township between 24th Avenue and 28th. From engineering, uh, 47th and a half Street in Columbia, a uh, contractor has completed the work. The road to reopen upon removal of contractors' equipment from work site. So uh, that's what they have to report, and this is a a weekly thing that comes out, and if you don't get it as a board member, uh, make sure that uh, you want know, to give me your email. I'll, I'll give you a point, and we'll see that, that you get it. So, Any questions? Yeah, I just have one for you. Has, has our uh, uh,
Harvard's affair, has she had any affairs lately? No, I haven't heard of any crazy. Are you interested? No. I don't want to know if you've heard any reports of any action that she Okay. Well, yeah. Um, she has a lot going on. And actually, we get it in the news. I should report that. You know, talking about next time. That um, we were looking for 25000 a year and we wound up 50000 a year for that office. Mm -hmm. And it's going to be a continual basis. It's something we don't have to apply for every year. Which is, it's going to be granted to us every year. Mm -hmm. From here on out. For the running up partially. Have, she up heard, out. have you heard how? It, you know, it, what is she doing? Do you know? Oh, actually, um, I got a report, um, I think two months ago, I'll get another one from her, and, and uh, try to remember to bring it next time. So you know, he's oh, doing it. Right, yeah. yeah. He's helping a lot of people. So, okay. I know that. Sorry for the fraud and the unstruck. Any other decent questions? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Right, um, we make our first call. Are we into the oh. service screen? I have a All right, come on up. <coughs> these, these guys are good for all seniors tonight. I, I promise not to take long. Captain, would you pass those? I certainly will. Board members. I think everybody uh, hopefully has in front of them tonight three documents. I just want to call them to your attention. This is the monthly newsletter that goes out. You should already have this uh, for this month. But uh, I would encourage you to read it and to just simply find out all the activities that are provided for our county. Uh, it's tremendous. And, uh, you know, there are three things that are problems for most seniors. Uh, one is finances. Uh, one is uh, housing, home care. And the third one is uh, socialization or activities. And there's information in here about all of those. And then you've got uh, two folders in front of you tonight. I would encourage you to take these home. One of them uh, describes how we've had to uh, basically have, we're serving three, uh, three members in the county now. Uh, people from Columbia Township uh, and the, the long list here of people that uh, voted in the 0.5 mills. And uh, we're getting all the services. Mm -hmm. Area is supposed to uh, go with 0.25 mills, get less, and then fewer ones that haven't didn't vote in anything. There's only four of those in the uh, whole county that voted that way, and I'm sorry they did, but that was their choosing. So it made things complicated, but our township residents. Uh, have all the services available. And this is take home with you. It tells you all the services that are available. And I can't encourage you enough to, you know, you all know a neighbor or somebody down the road who could take advantage of these, but they don't do it. And sometimes an encouraging word from somebody else like you is going to get them involved in that. And, uh, you know, there's a lot, of, a lot of services out there. People in Columbia Township are taking advantage of it. We like that. But uh, there are always more that could be. I think our senior population is going up all the time. So, yeah. <coughs> thank you. I got a question for you. Oh, do you know anything about Triad? Triad is something. It's uh, still, we're still connected with it, but. It's not viable, it's not. Well, it's the Sheriff's Department that. Set it up. Yes. And I think they've just dropped the ball, that's my opinion. But okay. are you still having your fair? <laughs> <laughs> I've been to the fair a couple of times, yeah. Uh, no, uh, but as it, far as. Uh, Triad is still still on the books. Okay. I, I personally think it ought to be reinstated, reinstated and turned over to senior service and let them operate. I think so too. Because I think they could put it on it. Papa, I put it on in South Haven. Right. And get people involved there. So, who do you go to? The Sheriff's Department? <coughs> I would, okay. if I were you. Yeah. And I'll say something to the senior folks. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Any other questions, folks? I've got a question for you. Yes. Why do you, why do you think our 
is our participation low for our seniors? And, and I'm wondering, is transportation a problem? I know there's the bus that they can call, but I don't know how the schedule works sure, it, with it the can change that's going on. Okay. We have the monthly luncheon at the Congregational Church. That's it's just one, though. easy right? for people to get to. But the daily food, very mm -hmm. economical, is in Pawclaw and South Haven or Hartford or Lawrence. Mm -hmm. And nothing in Bangor and not at the present time, no. And and only once a month here. Yes. Yes. Is there any thought of maybe increasing that or is there enough for <coughs> Well, I suppose what they're going by is the number and I think yeah. it's running about twenty, twenty five. Uh, and I think that's the lowest of our communities meal wise. Yeah. But we don't know I don't know personally how many of our people go to South Haven? And they're doing that, too. See. They're not coming here. They're going to South Haven. Yeah. And uh, we're going to know that kind of more detailed information once, because Columbia residents are all going to get on one of these little cards, and every time they do something, it's going to go into the machine. And so we'll have an absolute record of who's done what. Good. But There's we don't have that now. There's stuff out there, but it's yeah. just... I personally know about it because I hear about it being involved, you know. Mm -hmm. yeah. We've built ramps in Columbia Township. We've uh, we've trans transported people to the doctor appointments and so forth like that. Uh, wish I had a more definitive answer, but I don't. I just want to say in this regard too, they have that box at the Congregational Church now that you go there and you give whatever it is you're not using, you put that in there, and that's for people that don't have food and stuff like that. And that's a wonderful thing, and Dave is talking about doing it for the fire department. But you can have the box and you can have the food, but they better start coming and getting them. That's the other side. Well, of the, other, the, the real program is our monthly program comes out of here. Yeah, I know that. That, that's, that, that serves yeah. a lot of people. Yeah. Or the last commodities we have were fantastic. Unreal. Thank you, Dave. Thank you. Okay, moving forward. This is our just report. This one is going to be made up for our first budget meeting, and our next one is set for February 4th, 10th. And I just ask any of the board members if you can't make it, please let somebody know so we can get started instead of waiting. Um, also, um, I was invited to attend. The swearing in ceremony for the senators at the Capitol last week by Eric. Um, he gave us a Eric gave us a great educational tour of the Capitol building. And I got to meet our new governor, Gretchen Whitmer. She's a very nice lady. And that lieutenant governor that she has with her, boy, he is surprisingly very tall. <laughs> um, very tall. Um, I just hope she keeps the word on fixing those roads. So we see she does it. I'd also like to start a committee to work on the five-year and three-year growth plan. Um, Elliot has offered to head that up for me, and Dave Riva has also offered to be a part of that. And anybody else that's interested, please see Elliot, and let's get this going so we can get our um, data all straightened out and ready for our plan. Um, our community events committee will be meeting tomorrow at 3 to work on the next event, which what I understand is the soup supper. So, and also, I've been getting the weekly township updates from the Van Buren County Road Commission. I've been putting those up and placing them on the bulletin board. There's actually pictures from the culvert on 47 and a half back there that they just completed if anybody's interested in what that looked like. <coughs> and that's all I have. Thank you. Oh, pretty much business as usual again. Uh, we're all gearing to work up on this budget. Completed all the year end tests. Um, and I'm hoping to gain confidence from our supervisor that our vote that we come up here and uh, vote will be held up. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Okay. Yeah, just a little bit. Um, for Treasure December is extremely <laughs> busy. 
Uh, and as it happens, my deputy has been not feeling well and hasn't been able to come in, but that is something that I'm considering looking for somebody to, as a future replacement, but she's going to be pretty hard to replace. <laughs> she's got all the qualities I'm looking for, but uh, availability-wise, if somebody might be wanting to be available a little bit more weekdays, uh, I'm considering that. Uh, we did have the first budget meeting. Uh, as stated, we've got another one coming up. Uh, we are going to take something up tonight, I believe, uh, North Lake Special Assessment. And just, I'm not sure if everybody in the room is that familiar with what we do in those. Some of the property owners on local lakes form uh, lake associations because they have common concerns that they can work together with cooperatively. And in our township, we do have a couple of those that have uh, special assessment districts. And North Lake Association has one that they would like a renewal. So that process is just kicking off. So that will be one of the things we're talking about. Uh, so the taxes involved in that only go to that district that is specifically involved. It doesn't impact anybody else. That's it. John, do you have anything for us? I just wanted to say this. Uh, weather is now cold. I want you people, as you do your dryer, make sure you check that vent because I had uh, myself, my wife had uh, put in a couple of blankets there, and then after she got those out, I pulled that dryer vent, and I want to tell you, that sucker was clogged, and I think that a lot of fires that occur uh, that way are simply because people don't look. So keep your eye on that dryer vent, and make sure that that dryer vent is free because especially now that it's cold and you're using the dryer like that, it can happen in a hurry. And the second thing I want to bring up is the cemetery. I'm looking to put a flagpole in our cemetery, a 20-foot flagpole. we got a lot of veterans in there, and every cemetery that I've been in has a flagpole. To not only for the veterans naturally, but for uh, the sake of uh, honoring those that are in there. And so I'm going to be looking at that and uh, see if we can get one in on uh, uh, Grand Junction West because West has an open area where that flag can unfurl and won't get tucked in under <coughs> trees and stuff like that. That's it. Thank you, John. Beverly? No. Oh, Planning Commission had our first meeting of 2019. Hard to believe it's 2019. Uh, we elected new officers for the year. Uh, Leslie Elrod uh, will remain the chair. Linda Miller is our new vice chair, and Christy Case is our new secretary. We also, and thank you, Dave, for is Dave still here, vice chair last year. If you snuck out. <coughs> Um, we voted in a, a new meeting day and time. Our meetings now will be on the second Tuesday of each month at 7 p.m. Um, that will be posted shortly. Um, work continues on the update, the revision of the master plan. It's uh, slow going. We started reviewing discussion of section five and six, and that's because there's a lot to read. Uh, um, a lot of information in there. Leslie uh, Elrod provided us with some current demographic data that she found on uh, censusreporter.org and then some other data from the Census Bureau American Fact Finder to give us demographics on our community here. And uh, some of it was updated and it's really interesting. And I'll get some copies and maybe get them posted on the board or something. <coughs> Just if anyone's curious about what our what our data is here, and um, Christy provided us with an overview of results of the community survey, 
And uh, we just have started diving into that. We weren't able to go very far, just kind of touched on the surface right now. And uh, it's ongoing work. We formed a, an ad hoc committee, which is actually Leslie and Christy, um, and it's a short term thing. They're just going to look at the budget really quickly to see if there is um, any recommendations they have to bring to the board while we're working on our budget um, as far as 2019 goes. And that is it for now. Has anybody uh, gone to the zoning board to see if they could zone for marijuana? Not that you know of. No, this, this board didn't. No. Other than medical? Other than medical. No, we we opted out. Yeah, yeah we opted they, out. Yeah. They, they cannot. I just wondered if all go. No, no, nobody has that I know of has okay. made any type of request to anyone. Are you just referring to last month when we passed the the, the opt out? Not really the opt out. The, it's just a matter of did anybody because uh, they don't know we opted out or something like that. And then no, no one's inquired that oh. I know of. Yeah. Okay. This time we're going to do a three minute community comment to the board. If anybody has any comments they want to make real quick before we get going any further. Uh. I just wanted to kind of springboard off a little bit with I heard Dean saying uh, Breedsville Church uh, has ministries going out of there on Tuesdays from noon to 3. Every Tuesday? Every Tuesday from noon to 3, free food to those that need it, free clothes to those that need it, uh, library, uh, time just to sit inside and chill out. Uh, but that is every Tuesday. It's been going on now for about a year. Uh, but uh, so if people need uh, resources that they don't have, uh, send them down there. Uh, Patty Brown is in charge down there. And what's the hours? Twelve to three 12 to on 3. Tuesdays. Twelve to three on Tuesdays. Yeah. On the ambulance, um, I think both parties are here, which is awesome. And um, so you know, you guys know that Bill and I had a, an emergency last. Summer, I had a 20 minute wait and brought it up to the board because we moved from Illinois and we weren't expecting that. And I, you know, I feel kind of silly, but you know, live and learn. I, I really think, however, we, we go as a township, whatever ambulance service we go with, I think the ambulance service would be doing a fantastic community service if you would just educate us. So if I'm waiting, for 20 minutes, I also know it's because I've been seeing the low priority, and that's probably okay with me. You know, I, I, because I, because I'm talking to somebody, I, you make the call, you talk to somebody dispatch, they've got medical knowledge I don't have. Ma'am, I, I understand, doesn't sound super serious, we're going to deem you a low priority, or however it is you do that. Um, I think if the community understands mm -hmm. that there's a, there's a order to this, that would help a lot. Because there are some people here that are genuinely ill and cannot wait, and they might not want to move here if the rumor gets out that you're waiting 20 minutes for for an ambulance. Um, and um, I, I heard somebody talk about rural response time. What is the average rural response time? Can you tell it, me? It all depends on whether you're looking at Michigan and what part of Michigan, and then whether you look at the nation. Let's talk about Michigan. So yeah, so mm -hmm. in, in Michigan it is 12 minutes mm -hmm. um, for an average response, um, or actually in, in this area 12 minutes, but it's up to 13 mm -hmm. uh, in other parts of Michigan, and then the national uh, average is 26. Ooh. Okay. Yeah. That, that's not, I just think education. People know what the deal is. That that helps a lot, mm -hmm. and and I would just ask you to keep that in mind. Maybe even a contractual obligation to provide some kind of community education, whether it's these little events we're trying to pull off, or uh, I don't know, it can't be that hard. But why am I waiting 20 minutes if you want to know why? Yeah, yeah. Just, and I, that would have to come from either a 911 operator or how, however they would do that. Yeah, or in the course of a year when there's community events that the, and the, uh, the rest of the professionals make an appearance, they just 
in a flyer or something that just lets people know these are ambulance services and just so you know, there are levels of priority. And if you mm-hmm. wait, it may be because... It's a good sign. Yeah, it's a good yeah, thing. You know, <laughs> exactly. And, and one of the nice things is, well, is a lot of the communities have a good quality, I'm a heart program. Yeah. And that, and that helps out. So, yeah. so where, where you're waiting for an ambulance, um, you know, they, no, why? Already, how, many, how many responses did you guys have? Uh, it's just two months. Mo- oh, last, last year. In just the two months that we ran, it was 38. So 30, or 36. Yeah. 36. So we, we had 205, I think it was, 205 uh, responses. Um, but with, with, with a good quality MFR program, that's how this whole ambulance thing here in Michigan works. Without that, I, I can tell you, um, lives would be lost, guaranteed. Yeah. But your, your department here has some really good people. And that, that, that is definitely, it, it's our assist, basically. We're, we're fortunate to have companies or departments like them, because without them, we wouldn't be able to do as good jobs as we do. Okay. So, moving forward, your time is just an introduction. So, anybody else? Okay. We're going to move forward. I think we had a chance to look at all the different <coughs> minutes and the expenditures. Is there any questions on oh, that? Yeah. I have a related question, just on the agenda itself. I know you shortened it up just a little bit. It dropped out a couple things that maybe we should talk about. Announcements and correspondence. We typically don't have correspondence, but there are times that somebody sends us something certified that we actually are supposed to mention. So I don't know if we need that just as a tickler. Um, and announcements we don't have very often, but kind of the same idea. And an opportunity for the rest of us to either add or correct something on the agenda. That used to be on there and now that was dropped. I have a comment on um, this subject right here. Um, it's, it's difficult to to read all of this and, and to make sure that you're being careful when you get it right before the meeting. So a, a lot of the packets I got, but some of this we, we get when we get here. And I I just think that we should think about maybe doing it differently, trying to get it a week ahead of time, if that's at all possible, because it's just we're voting on these things, we're signing off on these things, and you know, most of it's little things, not a earth shattering if we make a mistake, but some things could be. Well, when you're looking at your business on the CD, it says ad meeting committee as a whole, well, that's what that's going to be about. Well, that's my comment about yeah. the packet and the timing. Yes, yeah, it is an issue because I had felt like I no longer wanted to vote on anything because if I've got 10 minutes during the meeting while everybody's out here watching to catch up on things. On the consent agenda, if we look at the meeting minutes, the only thing I noticed is I had started rounding the cash balances like last month was the first time I ever did it. And I just, all those items, they really weren't to the penny. And I don't know if anybody cares, but I'm just pointing it out. Um, it was to the whole dollar. Uh, and in the first payroll of the year, we didn't do anything about the assessor's wages being W-2 now. Yeah. Do, has he turned in? Does he have to give you a W-4? And has he done that? He just turned in last month, so that won't go until his next year. We're out right through this year. So. We're out right through this year. So you're talking about fiscal year, and I'm talking about calendar year. Okay? So fiscal year is when we that kicks in? Well, if that's how you guys are going to do it, because I'm sure I'm, I, I haven't figured out quite yet what the board has decided to do with this whole thing. Is it going to be a whole employee, or is it going to be just a partial? Yeah, I think it's just a partial, but I haven't seen anything actually written on that. It, it hasn't been written, right? 
So at least before April, right? That should be written so that you have something to go on for payroll. I think so. Well, it should take. It should be now. The, the payroll period yet is ended December thirty first. Right. So that's why I'm so going to go, go on payroll. All this. You would have to go on there. Mm -hmm. Well, I guess you can join at any time. I guess it, it was, was really going to matter. You can go on any time. It seems like the dollar amount that was kicked around would be like one of his checks. And then the rest of them would be all the salary. But we haven't laid that out. Right. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. So maybe we just, yeah, we've got to find out which is going to be, how much is going to be salary, how much is going to be W-2, I guess. But it's employees. Yeah. So for January, we're fine, though, is what I'm getting at. Is are we okay with the, the regular salary for January? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, and the rest yeah, we'll figure out the budget. Decide, you know, what is, is, you know, if he needs to be paid as an employee or if he needs to be paid as a yeah. uh, 1099. Right. That's what he has to be. Right. He's probably going to be both. He's going to have one check that's a W-2 and the rest is 1099. Which portion will be the W? Well, we'll have to look that out. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But anyway, you need to receive it from somebody in order to execute on it. Right. And I understand you just announced that there were different officers for planning commission. Is yes. there a tiny bit of a dollar pay difference for secretary? And I sent Stacy an email just okay. tonight before I left. She probably hasn't gotten it yet. Yeah, and the checks are already done though for June. But yeah, no, well, that's that's fine. Fine. Well, anyway, right? so we're so we're on the check in February. Yeah. Okay. So those were in the consent though, because those were things already written up. So at this time, is there any other questions on the minutes or the expenditures? I'll get you your approval, right? Okay. Well, I'll make a motion at this time to go ahead and accept those. I'll make a motion to approve the uh, consent agenda. I'll take it. All in favor, John? Yes. Yes. Beverly? Yes. 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 Yeah. Motion passes. Before we approve this agenda, is there anything that somebody would like to anybody would like to add to it at this time? Just the line items, um, just announcement correspondence. If, if that applies, which it may, probably doesn't tonight, right? Okay. So do we have a motion to accept this agenda? I thought that's what I just did. Right? Yeah, I that, that was the consent agenda. This was the motion to do this agenda. So we didn't have anything to it. We didn't have the rest of it as it Oh, I have a question. There's one thing that I didn't have anything in my, well, two that I don't have anything in my package. Why don't we just keep that up there in line one instead of making two votes? We can do that. What was your question? Two things. I have nothing in my package, but maybe we don't need it. Um, street, the street light, I don't have anything, and maybe maybe we don't need it. And the key policy, unless it's something new, we already addressed this, and maybe that could qualify. be part of the committee of, of the whole. I think the key policy myself, clerk has a key to the clerk's office, treasurer has a key to the treasurer's office, the supervisor has a key to the supervisor's office, then we make duplicate keys for all offices and put them in a box, and if someone is not able to be there and information is needed, that belongs to the county. So if that becomes necessary, there's a key for that. And be gotten into. So That's why you have deputies, John. Well, what if they're not around? Because we usually are. Well, I That's why it's a, there's a, a, a duly deputy. It's already set up in place. I still think a duplicate key is what we're going to have. Okay. I think we lose security, not gain security. <coughs> 
I thought the key policy was our issue on signing out keys. That's what I thought it was on here for, but it wouldn't, you know, surprise me if a new thing hit us. So on the key request form, CC, everybody was supposed to have sent one, just gave, you know, go around to the back of CC. And we still have a couple people that have not turned one in. So before we can actually change codes or change the outside lock key, we make sure everybody is filled out one of these people. Kind of makes sense to have in writing who has the key to the hall, who's sure. been given a key in, in the past, and, or going forward, who's been given a key. It's just good practice. Okay, so let's go ahead and go forward. So are you saying a duplicate key would be a good idea? I think you guys got to approve the agenda. <laughs> yeah. I was asking that that be moved to the committee as a whole, especially now that I know that it's more to it than what I thought. Okay, so let's move that to the committee as a whole for next. Yeah, that will be good. That in the street light, correct? Let's do it. We can. Unless you, yeah, we can do that one too. Tonight or move? We'll move. So let's go ahead and, if everybody's all right with the rest of the stuff on the agenda, I need a motion to approve this agenda. I'll make a motion to approve the agenda. All in favor, John? Yes. Daisy? Yes. Karen? Yes. Beverly? Yes. Moving on to unfinished business. Resolution, the first one of the year is to weigh the penalties and interest on local tax collecting. That's something that we do every year. Has everybody had a chance to read over it? Was there a change from the one we had prior to the one we have tonight? No, just a categorical answer. Oh. Do I have a motion to accept this? I'll move to accept this. Second? I'll second it. Anybody want any discussion on it? <coughs> Um, John. Yes. Stacy. Yes. Karen. Yes. Beverly. Yes. Very good. So, Supervisor declared this motion is carried and was duly adopted. Um, what are we adopting? That we want one or we get one? Or? <laughs> That we're accepting this. Oh, wait a minute. Okay, I got it. January 15th, 2019. Move forward. Down to our new business. Resolution, the second one is the North Lake Stack. Oh, I'm going to back up for your street light real quick. Uh, you know, I think we can go forward with that. Um, I think, yeah, it's the only, I remember, right? I think it's $100 for the holiday cost or something to apply for it, put in for it. Oh, no, no, it's just, it seems to be completely different. Um, they, because they can no longer, they, they will no longer do the oh, light. Oh, the cross ones, that's right. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, that's right. Right, that's right. That's right. Yeah. 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 That's right. Okay. So, you know, we're going to go ahead and move that down to the committee and call the Okay. So, moving on to our business resolution, our second one would be the North Lake Stad. And that looks like going, we're going to have a lot to look at on that. Did everybody get a chance to look at what we did? I thought, but I didn't see where the, the resolution is up. Yeah. Yeah. I don't have a resolution. Okay. And it says 
impacted by the special assessment district. I don't see no. Yeah, I don't have those. Would you like to hear from Gail at all on this? No. We also have Gail here from the North Lake Staff District. If she likes, if you guys have any questions, she can fill you in on. The only question I had was, yeah. I know that this is on aquatic stuff, mm -hmm. but <laughs> North Lake is notorious for doing things on their own, and I understand that it's been addressed, but I just want to make uh, public comment that they need to do that. And uh, they had someone in office there that said, no, if you need to do this, go ahead and do it. If you need to do this, go ahead and do it. And you can't do that. Well, our, uh, we have an association. There are uh, 50 members. We have a meeting every month. Right. I'm the secretary of the association, and I keep in communication with everyone. And uh, we began with a special assessment, uh, the very first one, I believe it was in 2009. And uh, it was for a five-year period. Um, and we, uh, as a, a group, the, collectively, the uh, members of the association decided that we should take a look at the aquatic plants mm -hmm. that were just taking over our life. Can I and interrupt you just to offer a microphone? Oh, sure. <laughs> Thank you. Am I in a time limit here? Three minutes. Three minutes. Well, we invited her for as long as it's not 20. No, it won't be. <laughs> uh, so, um, I don't know if everybody can hear me. I'm Gail McLaughlin, the Secretary of North Lake uh, Association. And uh, it was determined that we had excessive weed growth. We were spending a lot of money on... Uh, can I take... Yes. I don't know if it's yeah, that's right. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, duct tape. We can hear you fine. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I raised the whole yeah. post up, so I think well, I should I don't know about you guys in the back, but I can hear you fine. Yeah, we can hear you fine. Okay. Yeah, we can hear you fine. Can you hear me? We can hear you better up here. Okay. Oh, thank you. When you're tall, you think tall. I don't know if I'm that tall. This is good. Okay, much better. And we were spending a lot of money on herbicides. And we decided that there had to be a better way. And in uh, 2014, we developed a restoration committee. And uh, we hired a limeologist who is a doctor of uh, uh, inland lake science. And uh, she made recommendations. We looked at a lot of options. We presented it to the membership. And it was decided that we would have a, a, another special assessment in addition to the one that we had to fund an, a whole lake aeration system. And we put that into place, trying to figure out what the budget would be. And it changes a little bit. Uh, the electricity costs more than we initially thought. Um, we are still using herbicide. We're, uh, trying to wean our way off of it, but we're still using herbicide. We have uh, uh, lots of fees with testing from the Michigan Department of Environmental Quality. And um, our one SAD expired in August. And so we developed a new one, which is what we are proposing now. And we submitted petitions to all the members and Michigan law mandates that you have to have 51% of the acreage. And uh, we had, uh, as of uh, yesterday, 75% of that acreage turned in signed petitions. And when those were reviewed, um, there were some, I don't know, discrepancies on the actual signature. And we spoke with the uh, attorney, and um, 
I have a, uh, an email from her that I think she sent to all of you with a, a recommendation uh, to proceed with the, uh, this, this would be just the intent to have the SAD uh, in place. So then we would have to follow the other procedures in place, um, which would be public hearings, um, informing all of the people on the lake uh, to come to the meetings if they have questions, and so on. And that's a recap. Yeah. Feel like the 63%, 63.5% is this accurate now uh, as total acreage? Uh, that's the number we've got on, on this currently. I think that was your initial. That was, oh, that's an old Two one. Weeks Two weeks ago. Two weeks ago. She's brought so in. So now it's going up higher. It went up higher. In okay. fact, somebody, because um, I emailed, emailed the membership, uh, everybody whose email I have. Uh, last night to tell them about this meeting, and there were a couple people that had forgotten to send it in or whatever. And I got two more this morning, and I'm okay to do that. Is this just for one of your special assessments for that lake? Because I think you have two of them on that. We lake. do. We have one that will expire in 2026. This one, yeah, that that was a uh, that was a. Ten year one. We are writing this one for eight years so that it uh, begins in uh, 2019 and expires in 2026 when that other one does. So they are run concurrently. And it would be an assessment on the winter tax and on the step summer tax. And that's how it works. Two assessments on both of those two or one assessment on summer bill now and then one assessment on winter? One on summer, one on winter. So they staggered. They staggered, right. Okay. And I think ideally for you all would be in 2026, if and when we renew it again, just add one. Makes it easier probably on you. Oh, I think on everybody. Yeah. Just as one right, right. <laughs> sure. Yeah. And it's surprising, you know, we just never did it before. And um, yeah, five years goes by fast. Yeah, well, that and then the turnover rate. Yeah. Yeah. Right yeah. Down the lake. yeah. Yeah. Any questions? Okay. Thank you, John. Thank you. Do you all have questions? Should I ask them now? No. Okay. <laughs> so our attorney, who's been working with Gail and Karen on this, mm -hmm. and she sent over all of the information. You don't forget you. <laughs> uh, you guys did most of the work. Um, so she sent over all this information. So before us, we have, we need to know. To go forward with the impact, we need a motion to, to go forward with the intent for the North Lake Saddle Lake. Say it's again. Not, it's not Saddle Lake. Not Saddle Lake. North Lake Saddle. Yeah. 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 I'll make a motion to accept this uh, excerpt of the minutes for the regular meeting. Um, basically stating that uh, they filed petitions with the township and all the signatures were there and the board is recognizing that these signatures and all requirements have been made to start the process to reestablish their special assessment district. And I'll second that. So and that I won't restate it. Yeah, I'll second that. Is that a motion? This, this meeting is recorded. <laughs> motion to approve it. To and then and we'll know more from the public hearings if there's any pushback or whatever. Yeah. But for now, they bring their petitions forward. Yeah, I was just kind of helping shorten the cycle. <laughs> <laughs> I'll second that if someone hasn't yet. And, um, oh, on the second part, do you want to do the second motion? To, to the end, I carried by the board acting both pursuant and pursuant
action on the board's own motion to direct the plan to be prepared and propose a quality plan control project. That the estimate of the cost of the same be prepared. That these plans and estimates which have been prepared in anticipation of the board's action were then presented by the board for this consideration. Total estimate cost of being $19,250 per year. Do we have a second on that? I thought we made a motion on the whole thing. No, I didn't realize there was another motion to go into. Oh, no, there's more motions. I'm sorry. So I now need a motion made by, seconded by, for securing the ordering of the plan to estimate to be filled with the township clerk for public examination. This isn't saying that the that the clerk though has to prepare all these plans. This is saying that the Oh yeah, didn't anybody tell me? That's why I'm double checking here. No, it was this all had to come from there from the So I'll make the motion that the township board Direct that plans be prepared for the proposed aquatic plant control project. And that the estimated cost of the same be prepared. Is that good enough? Yes, she's going to second. So that would so what you mean the most. Yes. Okay. Anybody second? Oh, second. Mm -hmm. Are we down to the third motion? I'll make a motion um, that they um, carry out the ordering that the plans and estimates are to be filed with the township clerk for public examination. Second. Mm -hmm. I'll second it. I'm putting down Karen. Okay. Okay, <laughs> looking on the fourth motion. All right, I'll make a motion that we adopt the um, this resolution. One second, Karen. Okay. And it's basically just an intent to undertake. So. All in favor, do we want to do it all in favor? Everybody is going to say aye. 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 In favor. Aye, aye. Aye, aye. Aye, aye. Yeah. Aye. Okay, thank you. Aye, aye, aye. Now then, on the other resolution. On the second page of this. Um, if you look down, I can see further in the resolution that the hearing on um, suggested petition to include the cost estimated. You see that section? And it's showing that it should be. Are we looking here? The first date of, well, the date for the public hearing would be February 20th at a regular meeting. But I think it's been seven. It should say six. Oh. Mm. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, uh, no, 19th is a Tuesday. So, yep, 20th, yeah. So, so we should switch it to the 19th, but make it at 6? Or what? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. We're going to do that February 19th at 6 o'clock. Gail, does that work? For you? If you have to, I'll give it work. <laughs> we'll make it work. 
Yeah, I think you'd want to be here. Yeah. Yeah, we'll miss some. Are there any other corrections that might be made on this resolution? No. Well, is that, I need a motion to accept the resolution of corrections. Well, I'm just looking. I don't know. I, I don't think on this, but I don't know. On the other ones, there was X amount of days that would have to be in the paper before. Does that follow me? Does that follow me? Well, I don't have anything in front of me to put out yet, so. Right. It's all something that comes to me. And it's got to be read by Wednesday in order to make it to the next week into the be published. Tomorrow, Wednesday? So, uh, no. Yes. yes. Yep. I would have to have something for tomorrow if it were to go out in the paper to come out this weekend. And that would put it. Is that just notice of public hearing? I'll have have tomorrow. Um, and that's notice of public hearing that you're looking for. Right. Yeah. We had to be in the 30 days before. And posting this resolution isn't sufficient? You have no, to I have to have something for the paper that was yeah, of, of, of everything that, of this whole hearing and... Yeah. So and Catherine to, needs to get that to us, like, really fast. More morning on your floor? Yeah. <laughs> if she can do what we can do, it, right? Yeah. Is yeah. that what I'm hearing? Yeah. yeah. And by what time tomorrow would you have to have it? What's the time? Oh boy, usually at about 12 o'clock. Yeah. Yeah. What's your man saying a public Thursday, isn't it? Oh, it's tomorrow. Yeah, yeah. I do. Yeah. 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 I don't know. I don't know. Are you talking about Wednesday? Yeah. Yeah. Thursday's yeah. 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 has a little yeah. added. Yeah. Yeah. But if it's something bigger, it's got to be. I think we should change that meeting day to something smaller. I don't think it's happening by on time tomorrow. I I don't either. Really so don't either. I mean, how if I have so much faith that uh, <laughs> yeah. but it is. Yeah, but you're relying on other people, right? Yeah, a couple in the chain. Um, so that's yes. More than one. So what is the alternative? When is our next March? Well, that's the first one. Yeah, I want to do a special meeting. Well, see, we yeah. might not need a really big special meeting if we're doing a budget meeting. That's a regular meeting. We could add something to the well, budget. Well, yeah, you want to write it up while well, there's that. That's on March 4th. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
We have our poverty, our next third resolution for the year is the poverty and debt guidelines, which we pass every year. Oh, uh, yeah, and this didn't get typed up correctly. Yeah, we got it. had to be redone. There's there's two columns, and there's only supposed to be one. Oh. She typed it up wrong last year, I remember. Now I ended up retyping the whole thing. Um, and that's why there's two. Mm -hmm. in Two tables in there, so we can't do anything. So this ten percent extra was not even supposed to be a column. Well, there's only supposed to be one one column. The federal um, poverty level. Right. It doesn't need two columns. There's there's too much here, is what has happened. Now now that I see it, and remember, I thought it was going to come back to me, and I'm just going to plug in the numbers, but it come back to me with this one that was wrong from last year. Right. I saw so, the one last year was similar. Right. And there's, there should only be one table in the whole resolution. And, but and let me ask this question. Why, and also, how did we get this 10% extra talent? Was this requested last year? This was, um, no, this was originally how um, Mr. Peterson did the very first one. First two minutes. When, 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 when you go on the, the government website, when oh. they're doing the poverty guidelines, right. they have the percentages there also that are over because a lot of programs allow up to a percentage over right. the poverty level, and that's right. probably why that was on there. Yeah, but I don't know how Columbia Township got the 10%. There's a lot of different yeah, I don't know possibilities. Yeah, I don't This is what I printed off. They had 138, 250, and 400. But these are just examples. This is the column that matters. And, and, and it should be the, the poverty guidelines. So poverty threshold and poverty guidelines are, are different things. So I don't know. If they came to the same the numbers. Board, they came to the, the same numbers. Uh, board of Review uses it, correct? See, this is all it should be. There's a whole extra paper that got them. Right, but you do have a separate column there for the same Right, but I'm just saying this whole... Yeah, the chart was repeated. Yeah, and I didn't know you, why yeah. it was repeated it, either. Yeah, it wasn't actually was not supposed to be. It was it was typed up wrong. Okay, at the, from the very beginning. And when I mm -hmm. gave this one to Jerry last week, he must have passed it on to Rhonda, and I just had asked him to give me the numbers, and I would replug it into mine that I had. So but you have a Rhonda good template. Rhonda plugged it into okay. hers, which actually was wrong. Okay, so it should be the next one. Like I said, will look like this. And Jerry is is usually the one that does the numbers, and then I would just plug the numbers in. But Jerry usually has the responsibility of giving me the correct numbers. <laughs> Can we accept it tonight with the correction made of deleting this column? No, it's it's no because it's just I I want to double check it because. It's, it's not even, there's extra in that that doesn't need to be all okay. in there. So there were two notes added at the end. So you want a table that's added at the end here? Yeah, that's what it sounds like. Jerry would just give it back to me like that. Okay. So at this time, I need a motion to table that? I make a motion with table to follow any exemption. All in favor, John? Yes. Thank you. Yes. Karen. Yes. Beverly. Yes. Oh, you should be nice. Okay. Moving forward to some last stuff here. Yeah. So, we, there's been some talk about having a second meeting so we can discuss some other things and not make decisions on it. And I would just like to go ahead and make a motion here that we add a second meeting every month and it's going to be called the committee of the whole and i want to make a motion that we meet like the first monday of the month at maybe 10 o'clock see what i was thinking of it will be the monday before the meeting because you set the agenda on a friday and if we saw something in the agenda that we need to have it discussed before we got to the actual meeting we would do it that monday so our, our thought behind this, John, is that if we do it the first of the month, if there's anything that any of us want to bring to the board, that there's enough time to do the research, to print out things and get it to everybody so they can review it 
before it's actually handed to them through SME. And it gives us time to work on things from the last meeting to Well, then you wouldn't have what happened here tonight. In other words, right. you right. would have had that right. discussion. You right. would have had that If there's any corrections, right. we would know about it. It's only meeting. No decision. Exactly. Yes, absolutely. We're not, we're not passing nothing. We're not doing nothing but talking. And we all know how to do that. So, at this time, I'd like to make a motion that we do this on a Monday morning at 10 o'clock. Is Monday morning okay at any time? Yeah, Monday morning is good. That works for you? Monday for 10, sure. Monday for 10. It's not good. All right. What's good for you today? No date. What do you mean, no date? We're working. So, I'm going to make a motion that we do Monday at 10 o'clock, first Monday of every month, for a committee of the whole. Do I have a second? I'll start it. I have discussion. My concern on that is. In, from MTA, I know you said that this is an MTA term or something, mm -hmm. and I checked with them and they did say that this would still be considered a meeting that would have to be posted, yes, minutes, and allow public comment, yeah. the whole thing, yeah. which is not how I thought you explained it. I thought it was so more right like back internal in the, affairs. The yeah, so... So does it defeat the purpose, or does it help? <laughs> well, what, here's what, what I was thinking. What I've been thinking all along is we jam a lot of stuff into each meeting. Yeah. Too much stuff that I feel like to do. I mean, we, we just kind of like jam through it, basically. And well, if we had an extra meeting, it would give us a chance to actually work on things, because... Again, we can't we can't meet here that outside of a meeting. We can't communicate three of us at a time. So I just thought I'm thinking that it, it's a good way to try to get more done in a year's time. You talking about the MTA conference? No, we're still talking about the committee of whole. Well, the committee of whole is when we wouldn't be doing what we're doing tonight. That would already be taken care of. Except it'd be the same conversation, it would just be twice a month and some more. Could it be something that there's always going to be leftover stuff? There's always yeah. going to be. But not like it is now. It, it seems to be piling up or getting on the back burner or getting forgotten because there, there's so much on the agenda. We don't get to it all for whatever reason, one or another. And then next month, there's so much on that agenda that there seems to be things that keep getting left behind. And you start to get a little pile of those. You mm know -hmm. what happens to my estimation is you start tabling things and last year we had enough stuff on the table to build a two story house. So we don't want to do that again. Once we get this committee out of the hole, that's where we go through things that we're gonna talk about. I mean I'm not so that's you know, what we should call it. Right, I'm not <laughs> nobody wants to come. I don't really Know, more meetings, it's, it's not a fun thought, but I just I feel like it's something worth giving a try to see if it works. Yeah, you know, to do. see if we could get more done. We don't have a lot of time left, or at least I don't have a lot of time left. There's two years. I got two to make up for. So. I got all the time in the world. Well, and we do have two budget meetings coming up that are approximately the dates you just mentioned, right? Are, are both of our budget meetings Tuesdays at 10 on the 1st? Are they both the 1st? I thought our budget one's meetings on the were fourth. Mondays. One's on the 4th. Oh, I'm sorry, Monday. Yeah. yeah one's on the February 4th and that March 4th? Is that what they Monday. are? I don't have my calendar. That would be yeah. the first Monday. Yeah. So, is that those coming up? Yeah. And we can talk about this and that. Too, and the next two, so they're going to be posted as meetings anyway. Right. So when they post those meetings for the budget, you'll have to add other things on there as well. But then on, in March, you'd have to shoot that uh, well, committee as a whole for the following week or something because you'd be meeting the first time 
for the budget. I'm, I'm wondering. Well, we can add that to the budget. I mean, if anyone has to. No, we don't want to add nothing to their budget. Do you? Send it all the world. Where are we? So, to do the roll call vote, we have a motion to go forward with it on Monday the 10th, and I have a second. We have a discussion. Now, I'm going to do a roll call. John? Yes. Stacy? No. Karen? Not at this time. Beverly. I'm going to go with yes because I feel like we can always undo it if it doesn't work. And I'm going to say yes. So that motion passes. Moving forward, um, NTA conference is coming up April 1st and 4th in Grand Rapids. People say they want to go, so has anybody had a chance? Has, anybody, has everybody looked at the agenda? For, for the agenda? MTA. I've looked at it, I don't have a copy of it. I've looked at it either. You got it? What, you what are the keys? Yeah, it's in this, it's in this, it's in this Lunch. Lunch. That's what it costs. But anyway, it has to do. It's in Grand Rapids, so we don't have to do lodging. Our shingles bridge. Right. Oh, single day? Yeah, single day. Are we going to want to go? I want to go. But now we want to figure out what day we're going. That's the key. Oh, Tuesday or Wednesday? Yeah. Well, and we don't all have to go on the same day either. If no, but that's another card. Then, um, in fact, it might be good to not all go the yeah. same day yeah. if they can kind of yeah. spread out because they've got a lot of things running concurrently. At the oh, end. yeah. And it might make it so that we can actually hit more functions. I looked at the edit on Tuesday and after 4 30, I don't need a visa. They got no. they, they got stuff at the schedule, but not as far as I'm concerned, I don't need it. But whatever is going to go on Tuesday. Do it not to exceed the 189. Yeah. Number, um, and then you'll have $15. Any board, a day. That, that, any board member that would yeah. like to attend. And then you got $15 a day parking. Well, so you're looking at the early bird 189. Yeah. Do it not to exceed 230 or something. You probably want money at dinner or something. No, no, you'll get that. Oh, you'll get that. Yeah, we get that. Yeah, I know that I'm not prepared to pick which date, but oh, yeah. if you are just trying to find out, does anybody care what we've already spent in the budget? What we have to well, this will come out of here if you have anything left. Uh, let's see, April, you know, this is going next year, so. Everybody well, we have probably have left. to pay in this year if we get the early bird. Yeah, yeah. Due by March. Yeah. Yeah, we want the early bird, absolutely. That's true. And what's the date on the early bird? There is. Oh, really good. I would like to see that because I feel like we all do not have these kind of things. Well, so far, you guys have not spent much. And then you got $15 a day for parking when we had it there, too. You had a bunch of things. Everybody spent two. Make a motion. Not to exceed? Not to exceed $189. No, nope. well, they got $50 for parking, so we need 200 And I think you're, and we have a, a thing where you, you're allowed to get yourself some food. They get that. Yeah, they're they're probably they're probably that's the right. Oh, okay. Gotcha. All right, John. All right, John. Not to exceed $200. Yeah. 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 Should they sound like a I don't think so. Anyone that wants to go on the 189 to 199 I'm sorry, so each individual $200? Right. Right. There'd be two tens. And what is that? A 
conference fee and parking? Yeah. You got you got hundred eighty nine for the conference and fifty dollars a day for the parking. And that's assuming we book at the early bird rate. Yeah, if we go over to the birthday, then we got we got time to do that. Does anybody want to go more than one day? Not me. Do we absolutely have to do this tonight? We do. We don't. Have no, we don't do it. We're, 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 Let me tell you that there's money left in the budget on the individual lines. Trustees have five fifty left. For conference training, supervisor has 400, clerk has three, treasurer has seven, and planning commission has <laughs> plus in the budget. They want training. I know. Well, they're already working great. I can buy March too, so we can even vote on it. Sure. Because next month, uh, sure. also, still make the um, early bird. Right. And then we have a little more time right. to. So in the, in the meantime, between now and next month, if everybody figure out what you want to go, take a look at the brochure and find out what days you want to go, so that when we come back to the table, we can make. I like the one part I'm going is how to handle your police officer. Okay. So at this time, we're going to table the piece. Well, table until next month, so everybody has a chance to decide what class they want to go to. Okay. So I'm going to make that motion. I'll second the motion to table the MTA conference. I'll second. You're just going to do all of a motion. I mean, I broke off. John? Yes. Well, wait, I didn't hear the motion. We were talking. To table the um, oh, MTA conference till, till next month. So yeah. you decide what it is you want to go see. <laughs> Thank you, said she wants to mm -hmm. say yes. Okay. Karen? Yes. Beverly? Yes. Linda? Yes. Motion passed. Oh, one more time. Another comment. Anybody left out there that wants to say anything?
Yeah. We can meet all my. Hello. I actually have one. Sorry. <laughs> what? I, Linda, it was great that you went to Lansing, and I want to thank Josh for coming here tonight. That's what we love to see faces from above here at our little township. And I just want to encourage you to encourage Mr. Nesbitt to reach across the aisle and do the right thing and work for the people of our state, not all the politicians up there working for their own individual glory. We really need a lot of work done in this state. And we're hoping that people will represent us the way that they promised to do. So if you'll carry that message of folks. I'd love it. We're most honored for our Thank you. Do you have any correspondence or announcements that you need to make? No. Anybody else? Okay. Um, just a reminder, budget, uh, February 4th, 10 o'clock. Right. Um, I guess we're going to do the Committee of the Whole. We kind of touch base on it a little bit on February 4th. Mm -hmm. Our next meeting is going to be February 19th at 7 o'clock. So at this time, I would like to make a motion to adjourn. And I'll move on ahead. Thank you. I'll move on ahead.